hi guys and welcome back to ask nk so today i will be talking to you guys about a tool you have probably not seen in like forever and maybe even if you've seen this tool you probably haven't used it and i'm talking about a tool called rocket 3f okay and before i go ahead and talk about this stuff if you're not subscribed to this channel i would definitely advise you to hit that subscribe button guys and then you know turn on the notification and all that stuff and so what's rocket 3f rocket 3f is a windows based tool that encompasses basically everything which you need as a 3d modeling artist it is fast it is simple it is friendly it is something you definitely don't even need to learn how to use an, an app for you to be able to use it so if you're working with maya you are fine if you're working with blender you are fine if you're working with cinema 4d or 3d studio max depending on whatever tool you're working with you are definitely definitely fine why because the tool as it stands is a tool that you probably don't even need to go through an introductory class to learn how to use it compared to tools like maya okay or maybe compared to tools like blender or maybe compared to tools like uh, 3d studio max okay the interface is super easy it is super easy but the only thing i don't really like about the interface when it comes to uh the this particular tool is the fact that uh, it kind of looks a bit you know old-fashioned a little bit it looks a bit old-fashioned that is the only thing i would say about this that uh, i don't really like that much but despite that every other thing works fine it still has the same monochrome that every other app has it also has light version so depending on what you want to do or maybe how you feel or the kind of color scheme you make use of then you can go ahead and use it it has every single thing you need to get your modeling from ground up i'm going to talk to you guys about how you can work with this tool and i'm also going to talk to you guys why you should switch to this tool depending on what you are doing so let's say for example if you're working with maya you know we have some modeling tools and if you're working with blender you also have some modeling tools but the fun thing about this particular tool right here is that it encompasses basically almost the same workflow that maya has when it comes to the viewport and blender as well and almost the same workflow that 3d studio max has when it comes to the modeling techniques as well i'm going to go ahead and explain all of this to you speaking of which this is the ui and this is rocket 3f but before i talk about the app or before i start showing you what the app does uh just a little stuff for you to know is it has bridges which simply means you can bridge this to mole 3d 3d code and also key shots so once you're done making your models you can just ship them off and get a proper render from that does it mean you cannot render that no it doesn't mean you cannot render in uh, rocket 3f you can definitely render inside rocket 3f it also has some tools that you can go ahead and play with i'm going to show you a couple of things as well and then when it comes to the pricing it is totally free but they have a premium version which simply means that you can pay about 80 euro and what that does for you is you can now maybe customize the tools customize the hotkeys and the ui it is not subscription based and it is something i like so much as crazy as it sounds this is rocket 3f this is everything you need to find out there is no hidden menu there is no hidden shortcut there is basically nothing that is hidden everything you're looking for is here and the first thing that will come to your mind when you see this is it's definitely going to remind you about cinema 4d but despite that i'm still going to talk about some things that it has in relation with cinema 4d as well and let's start off with the ui definitely the ui is not the best in the world because the colors are just punching me right in the face Colors that are a little bit less saturated will do it for me. If I'm going to give you an example with uh, Autodesk Maya or maybe even Blender, you can see that the colors they have are little less saturated. And even the ones that actually look like they are saturated, they are definitely outside the uh, highlight value. They're almost towards the dark values, these particular ones here. So maybe for the colors, I think the colors could need a bit of rework. But despite that, we would look at how you can perform with the ui so if you're using blender uh, the recent version of blender or you're using maya you know when you hold alt this is industry standard when it comes to rotation okay orbiting around your scene zooming in and zooming out it's exactly the same thing that happens here so you hold down alt you can rotate you can zoom in you can zoom out with alt and your middle mouse you can pan around 
okay that is one feature that it borrows from maya which simply is amazing it also borrows that same feature i think you can still do that with blender okay let's just confirm that yeah so if you hold down alt you can rotate around blender if you hold down alt and your middle and your left mouse button if you hold down control which is now uh, slightly different if you hold down control with your uh, middle mouse button you can zoom in and zoom out okay if you hold down alt with your middle mouse button you can pan around your scene okay slightly different but almost the same so if you're working with any of these apps definitely it's easier for you to you know navigate around your scene with this particular tool let's talk about the other features so if you've worked with um modo before or maybe you've worked with cinema 4d you understand that we have something called pivot orientation that uh, all of these certain kinds of orientation and we also have different kinds of um work planes so in cinema 4d you can set your work planes in modo you can also set your work planes the same thing with lightwave you can still set your work planes here you can also come through and set your work planes the pivot is relative to the particular object that you're working with in time so you can decide to change your pivot position or your pivot orientation based on the world axis object ax axis the selection axis or manual axis Okay, so you can decide to change it manually by selection, by object, or by the world. We're going to look at that later. Your basic modeling tools, they are here. The basic modeling shapes that you need, they exit out here. So let's say you want to work with a spline, you can, you know, select the spline work. If you want to work with a text, you can, uh, you know, click on the text and, you know, uh, put a text here and then go ahead and work with it. Now, speaking about creating stuff, let us talk about how you can make this stuff yourself. So contrary to working in Blender where you just have to click and, you know, it appears directly on your viewport. And the same thing that happens in Maya, although in Maya you can still go ahead and fix it, it has a similar approach like when you are working by default in 3d studio max what do i mean so let's say we want to create this box if i click on this box i can come through click and define the length and the width of my box before i can go ahead and define the height of the box how this works in 3d studio max is relatively the same so here in 3d studio max it works relatively the same so what we can do is like if we come through let me just go ahead and expand this real quick okay and click on the box here i can come through you know select this define the length and the uh, and uh, the width and then i can go ahead and define the height so it copies this uh object creation process also from 3d studio max so what i think is it's making use of like the very best part of individual softwares you know putting all of them together and giving us something that we can work with so let's go ahead and just uh click on done and then we have our box here a cool feature that we that also exists here is at any point in time if you want to see your object subdivided instead of coming through and you know clicking on subdivide and going ahead to see it you can just simply press the tab key and then you can see your object subdivided on the fly this button simply means isolate i'm going to go ahead and create another object here but now with a different process so let's go ahead and create a plane and instead of running around the scene trying to define the width and the length i'm just going to click on create also you can choose to create automatically which simply means you can add up drop so once you click it's going to drop similar to what you can get in maya and also in 3d studio max so i'm go just going to click on done and scale this up by default if you download this app you may not see the manipulator it simply means that the manipulator by default has to be turned on this is something that is very very similar to apps like blender for example so like in blender you may probably not see the mani manipulator unless you turn it on i'm going to show you how so with blender open this is how you you know run around your blender scene for example you want to move an object from a point here to a different point you need to press the g key and you know grab this object to a different point for you to be able to see the manipulator it simply means that you need to come through and turn this on and now you can get the manipulator similar issue is what we get when or similar scenario is what we get when we're using the rocket 3d by default you can just simply select the move and then you know click on any of these axes and you can move your object around but if you want to move this object based on a manipulator it simply means that you need to come through and click here and then you can get the manipulator to move this depending on what works for you you can go ahead and play with this and if this ui sucks so much you don't like it and let's say you want to change this particular ui you can come through and play with the ui settings here 
more like what you can get when you're working with ZBrush, for example. My only problem with working with a UI like this is everything is grayed out, so you barely know which of the object is uh, selected or which of them is active at any point in time. So I'm going to advise you stick with this one and let's hope, pray, keep our fingers crossed that they are going to work on the UI and probably change it to something much more appealing. At any time you're working in your scene and let's say you have a lot of geometry and your scene is lost or you can do you know to get everything back in focus. Contrary to other apps where you have to press F on your keyboard and you know get those things in perspective or in view you can just simply press the space bar and then you're going to be able to get them in focus and how you can do this using the button is by simply clicking best fit so i'm just going to go all the way and just position this somewhere like here and hit on best fit and then you can find it if you want to revert to how it is in the beginning where let's say you've changed the whole the whole view you can just simply press home and then you're going to see it as it is from the beginning if you're wondering whether it has a quad view or a four or a three view, just like you can get in Maya 3D Studio Max or even Blender, yes it does and you can find that here. By simply clicking on this button, you'll be able to find all the other relative views. But for this, we wouldn't want to open up all of this, so I'm going to just simply click on Max with the object that is selected or with the viewport that is selected. This is your default snapping, so you can turn on snapping on basically everything that exists on this scene. One good feature with this, which I think every other 3D app should, you know, uh, have is the ability for you to select before we start talking about the selection let me tell you how you can manipulate or edit your geometries inside here if you remember when you're working with 3d studio max or let's say you've not worked with 3d studio max before if you're working with 3d studio max it's easy for you to move from an object to a component by using one two three and the four buttons number key buttons on your keyboard i'm going to show you how and then we'll see how it is in relation with something like this and so if you remember the box which we created earlier in 3D Studio Max, we still have it open here. I'm just going to zoom directly close to this. And if I right click and come through and convert this to an editable poly, you're going to find out that I would have about five different selection types. And these selection types can range from one, which is vertice, two, which is the edge, three, which is going to be the borders, four, which would end up being the faces and five which would be the entire component and this works some sort of way when you're using rocket 3d uh 3f and so how this works is this that if you have an object like this i'm just going to go through and select this box which you have here if we have an object like this and let's say i want to make a selection uh be it the vertice or the edge or even the face if i press one on my keyboard you can see automatically all the vertices are turned on if i press two on the keyboard i can get all the edges if i press three on the keyboard you can see i have all my faces turned on so one is for your vertice two is for the edge and three for the uh faces and once you go ahead and press four it jumps back into the object and i think it's basically all you need when you need to manipulate a geometry and another cool feature here is if i come through and sweep around just to make a selection so you remember if you're working in any other app you can either have a hotkey that simply means that once you start you know painting around your object you can make a selection like this but for this particular one i think holding shift would be your best bet but also you can still come through and just click and you know sweep around by just clicking and moving your mouse around but for me i think shift is the best bet for me so i'm just going to hold down shift because on several occasions i think i screwed it up by just not holding down shift i kept on moving the entire gizmo so with a selection like this let's say you want to go ahead and select the edges in other 3d apps they have various ways of converting this to that point so let's say you're working with maya for example which i'm going to show you right now so if you're working with maya for example and we have a box selected which we created in maya so i'm going to go ahead and just right click and select faces in Maya, once you hold down tab, you can sweep around, you know, and make a selection like this. But if you want to convert these selections to, let's say, the bounding edges, you need to come through and hold down control, right click, select edges, and now you need to select which of these edges you want. For now, we want to go with edges within the perimeter. So I'm just going to, you know, hold down control, go over this, and then to the perimeter. And this is how you can make a selection like that. Okay, over here, and the rocket 3f how you can make the selection is by simply pressing 
2 on your keyboard. And so once you press 2 on your keyboard, you have that selection and you can go ahead and just simply start playing with it. The same thing happens, let's say I want to convert this particular selection to the vertices, I can just simply press 1 on my keyboard and then you can see I have all of these vertices here. The big idea with using Rocket 3F is that the developers don't want you to spend so much time, you know, trying to find out the menus or maybe trying to find out how things work. And so most of the things that you're going to do which are operationally based are set to work directly with your mouse. I'm going to show you how you can do that right now. So let's say, for example, you want to come through and extrude the setting part of your object. If you want to extrude that part of your object, so I'm just going to uh, select these. Let's go ahead and select this part and say this is the part which we want to extrude. But first of all, let's do an insertion. So you can come through with this selected, okay? And you can come here and click on insert. Now, if you click on insert, you can insert this by just using your mouse. There is no need for you to handle the keyboard, but if you want to go uh, commando style, like it's called, or let's say you want to go expat mode style, you can use the D key to simply add an insertion and use the A key to simply do an extrude. Okay, you can use the A key to do an extrude and then you can use the D key to do uh, an insert. Moving on, there are also other things that you may probably know as different uh, names in different apps. Things like bevel are not called bevel here, just like they are called chamfer in 3D Studio Max, that is how they are also called chamfers here. So you can come through and click on the chamfer and you know chamfer the object the way you want. One thing which I've not been able to find out is how you can go through and add loops the minute you're doing your chamfering. But it doesn't mean that you cannot add loops by default. By default, once you have your object selected like this, you can come through and you know add loops uh, around the object. So I'm just going to select the edges. And for this one, let's say I want to add a loop around here. I can just come through you know, and add loops. Very similar way you can add loops in both 3D Studio Max, Maya and Blender as well. So enough with the modeling toolkit comparison and how you can make models. Let's talk about how you can do something very interesting. Something I think would really make me move from using uh, Maya to do my own personal topology and start using something like this. Okay, so if we open up the second example which we have here, we have this head that has been made possible by the guys at Anatomy 360. So you can check them out. Anatomy 360 is a place where you can find free anatomy or maybe paid ones and then you can go ahead and download them. This is not an ad, it is just a resource uh, reference for you to be able to find out where you can find this stuff. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is uh, come over to best fit. So let me just simply switch these away from front to 3D and be able to have this. Now, how do you do retopology inside here? So let's say you want to do a retopology directly inside this tool. How you can do this is pretty, pretty simple. And at any point in time, if you're not comfortable with the color, you can come through and select the matte cap here and replace this with a different matte cap that exists here. And you can use these as your own matte caps and also use them for rendering. And you can also increase this just in case you don't get enough of what you're looking for. Also, one other thing I think I might have mentioned earlier, just in case I've not mentioned it, it has bridges to both key shots and 3D code. So back to retopology. So how do you do your retopology here? First things first, you need to be able to have the object, which is obvious. Then the next thing which you need to do is have this object selected and then you can click on add. But before we talk about this add, I made you a promise earlier. I said, I'm going to show you how the pivot thing works. So at this point, I have my object and you can see that the pivot position is on the selection. And if I want it to be within the world, once I click the pivot, position is going to be on the world and if I want it to be on the object it's going to be on the object and once I click on object you can see where it is just indicating and then if I need it to be on the selection I would go and click on selection and then click the object one more time and I will be able to see it okay so let's get back to doing the retopology so for this retopology how we can get this to work now is I'm going to have this object selected just like we have it now and come through and click on add. So I'm going to add this as a reference. This is very similar to how you make or you do retopology in Maya. So I'm adding this as a reference and then I'm going to click on retopo. 
and automatically you're going to see that your model is going to turn white so what do you do after this depending on the model you're working on with this model uh, selected you can come through and turn on snapping it depends on what you're working on and these are various ways or these are various type of snapping options that exist so you have the snap to vertex you have the snap to edge and you have the snap to edge midpoint depending on what you're doing you can you know come through turn this on and go ahead with it but one thing to note whenever you're doing retopology in here is try and make sure that the object is not selected once you're done doing all of this adding it as reference and turning on retopo or maybe turning on snapping try and make sure that this object is not selected so what we're going to do is we're just going to click out without having this object selected so the next thing which we can do from here onwards is we can come through use the draw tool so you might have seen this draw tool like i said earlier in other apps and click on this draw tool and you can see that we have a wide range of options that we can work with so you can draw you can join you can cut you can extrude you can bridge all of those things you can find when you're working with tools like topogon and uh, other 3d tools as well so what we can do from here onwards is i can just click from a point and draw a line okay so let's say this is how i want the topology of this particular object to go so let's say i want something like this this is not the best one in the world but i'm just giving you a reference and let's say we want it to come through like this and we want this other one to come through like this one more another one and let's get this one here okay so let's say this is what we're looking for or let's say this is what we want to create and if we have uh, selected or let's say we've drawn what we want we can simply get to see our retoppled object or see what we've drawn by simply selecting one of these tools by the way for you to do your simple move rotate and scale is the same standard way of doing your move rotate and scale which is simply pressing w for move uh e for scale and r for rotate q is always you know select or unselect all okay so now once we select any of these options you can see that we have our object directly retoppled here and if you want to turn on symmetry or you want to create symmetry by this you know you can come through and just use these to enable symmetry so you have symmetry on both sides and so if you want to go on uh, doing your stuff you can come through and you know press 3 on your keyboard or maybe press 2 on your keyboard have all of this selected and continue doing the extrusion from there onwards if you want to continue with the draw you can just go back to this uh, select the draw but one thing you would notice is this does not happen automatically like you know when you're working with quad draw in apps like Maya or maybe you're working with uh, the topology things in like um, 3D Studio Max or in Topogon, what you get is once you go back, you can find all those lines and you, maybe you can work with it. But here, those lines don't exist anymore. So how you can continue working with this is you can come through and uh, select the draw. And maybe if you draw all the way to a point like this, so let's say want to get this drawing coming through and let's say we want something like this happening and within this part we want this to continue okay now for this part if you want to continue the line you need to come through and pick resume and resume that line all the way to this point you can also use the join to join uh lines together so i'm going to just come through pick the draw let's just make sure that the touch and i'm going to do the same thing here make sure that they touch something like this something like this and from this point i'm just going to you know click drag all the way to this point so it is something that you can make use of in your uh, present project if you are into modeling or let's say you are uh, into retopology or something like this it is a tool which I can advise you to, you know, pick up and go ahead and play with it. Let's quickly isolate these and see what we've done so far. So we'll just click on this button to isolate. And then if I press tab on my keyboard, you know, we can see what we've done so far. So it's fairly good. It doesn't look so uh, proper, but for a base, yes, you can go ahead and continue with something like this. And if you want to go and start doing things like the texturing and all that definitely this is also something 
you can do here so we have a material library that we can play with so if you come through to the material library here so if you come through to the material library here you can play with some certain set of materials that exist these are not matte caps these are materials that are here and speaking about matte caps and materials i will do a video later in the future where i'm going to explain the big differences between matte caps and material just in case you're having uh, an issue with that and these are the materials that exist here for now so i think it's something that is uh, also possible to change and also i have not been able to see uvs I have seen the boolean tools that work properly they work extremely fine so you can find the boolean tools here these are things that i would advise and suggest that you go ahead pick them up and you know play with them you can import models you can play with these models and the models which you can import they range from stl to obj to i think fbx as well uh, a large range of models i think uh, of things that you can import into this part and if you're wondering if it has layers, for example, let's say you're wondering if it has layers, if you can, you know, uh, parent things and all that. Yes, it has an option like that, but it doesn't have the option like layers. So just the same way you work in hierarchy within Blender and in hierarchy in Cinema 4D is the same way you work in hierarchy somewhere like here. So you can choose to pick this object and make this object the child. Okay, you can pick you, know, you can choose to pick this object and make the, this object the child of this main mesh and this is the scene hierarchy that exists. So one more thing which I think that I would really really advise other 3D apps to be able to make or uh, incorporate into the pipeline or into their workflow is the ability to select pattern. This is not something that we've seen a lot in different 3D softwares or within different 3D softwares. And these things they might exist but it needs maybe multiple buttons controls for you to be able to find them out or you need to uh, use some certain types of pattern for you to get them or you even need a plugin in most cases for you to actually get them so what i want to show you now is let's say i'm making a selection here and one more selection here and another selection here so just selecting one two and three and if i come through and hit pattern it will automatically you know get these patterns ready for me and this is something that you can go through play with and you know work with and speaking of creating patterns you know you can also do so many forms of selections if you come through and look at them from somewhere like here you know when you're working with things like the extrude and let's say the pool and all that they have various positions in space where they go to so for example if i come through now and look at the extrude for example and decide to extrude my object if i use my left mouse button and push it extrudes to the normal of that particular object if you use the right mouse button it extrudes somewhere totally different and once you're extruding just like you can see in apps like blender i guess once you start rolling the mouse or your 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 middle mouse button you can add and remove edge loops and at any point you're done with uh doing whatever you want to do or let's say you're done making the model and you just want to get a fair render of what you are creating you can come through and just simply press this button to see what the render looks like if you want to get a proper render of what you have been creating you can also come here and just click on this render button you can come through and add lights where you want lights to be and now you can see we're having lights directly somewhere like there you can add lights where you want lights to be right now we're having more of a three point light so if i come through and uh, position something like that but the funny thing is we have this light but we don't really have enough controls to you know manipulate the light the way we want it to be so i'm just going to position this object something like this and let's just collapse this a little bit and then hit uh the render button and so what is my honest review about this tool this tool is an amazing tool when it comes to modeling it is the best tool i have seen uh so far uh yeah you could say that maybe 3d studio max is amazing and all that but this is just channeled to modeling the lifeline of this particular tool 
is not for you to learn how to gather a lot of modifiers and you know stack modifiers that works and that don't work inside the place or you know uh learn how to play with or manipulate certain tools if you're just that artist that want to do hardcore modeling you just want to model your stuff you don't want to play around you know find some cheat ways of doing things then this tool is for you if you're getting into 3d my best advice is get this tool let it be the best or the first tool you get to make use of blender is amazing but this tool will get you up to speed faster than you know other 3d tools this is my personal opinion and you can also you know air your opinion in the comment section when it comes to texturing it has no texturing uh, feature it has no uv feature it also doesn't have any proper lighting feature it has bridges to tools that can get these things done properly it also has uh, a hierarchy bar which will get you up to speed if you want to work with apps like blender and 3d studio max and cinema 4d and modo but if you want to work with apps like my app this tool will only give you a head start when it comes to how you can manipulate the ui and also manipulate geometry other things i'm going to say about these tools is i wish for the guys that are creating apps like the 3d apps that we're working with not the rocket app i wish for guys that are creating premium apps to look at this particular tool incorporate the retopology retopology is nicer quicker and faster here the ease of use is amazing the ui is quite friendly despite the fact that it is not the best in the world right now and for the premium tools i've also seen uh shots about the premium tools where you can you know simply put if or if not kind of statement i really wish things like that can also exist in other 3d apps as well the plugins are great the tool sets are great but does this tool stand the test of time when it comes to every 3d tool or what a 3d tool can do if it comes to modeling yes it does but despite modeling i would not advise you to move to this tool if you are an artist that is just going to do uh, simulations and all that this tool is not for you if you're a sculpting artist take this with a grain of salt this tool is not for you if you are an artist that want to create fantastic stuff or you want to you know you're a freelancer you're a hobbyist you like modeling hardcore stuff this is your tool if you're a guy that you know you like playing with patterns you want to create patterns you like doing retopology then this is your tool but despite that this tool doesn't work as much as i would say a complete 3d tool works it falls in line with apps like uh silo and other 3d apps like wings 3d and so on and so forth the only big difference between a wings 3d silo and this particular one is that these guys they have the ability for you to do your uvs which this particular one doesn't have but then you need to also consider the pricing the pricing here is something you can you know get your hands on and go ahead and play with this tool can you find a tool that is this cheap that can give you all of this stuff yes blender does that and if you're comfortable with blender then you can come through and play with this just for the fun of it but then there are certain things which you might not find if you want to work with proper 3d so i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section below would you go over and download this tool would you want to play with it do you know what this tool is before now i want to know what you think about this in the comment section and if you like this video simply give it a like and don't forget to share with your friends and if you're new here it will be so amazing if you can just hit that subscribe button and also turn on notification so until i come your way again with a news update rant review or something like this Peace.